Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and today we're looking at some of our favorite cardboard slaying pocket knives that you can get right now. Let's check them out. So we've been thinking about this question a lot, especially over this last year and a half as you know, online shopping has taken off even more than we ever thought possible before. And along with that comes a pile of cardboard that needs to be taken care of. So we're trying to think of you know, some good knives that kind of really excel at that sort of task. And then we had one of you guys ask a question that really pulled everything together in, uh, in one neat package. So I'm gonna read that to you here. It comes from Mexaman M. Uh, what would be the best type of blade to use for cutting boxes and tape? Flat grind, a lot of belly, no belly at all, hollow grind. What would be the best blade to use for a task so simple? I really like it. And uh, so I pulled about seven knives here and I'm gonna introduce them a little bit and then we're actually gonna head out over to our warehouse probably where they have a huge mountain of cardboard just about every day. Uh, but if we're not over there, we'll find another cool spot to do some shooting. But we'll actually put some of these knives through their paces and see how they perform. Now, one of the knives that uh, I've kind of always liked to recommend uh, for this type of task for many years now is the Spider Code Delica. And there's a few reasons for it. One of the things I like to see for or what I've found works very well when slicing cardboard is very thin, flat grinds. And you've got that with the Delica. And I also tend to like a blade with not too much belly. The Delica has a little bit, but the thing if you have a lot of belly that can happen is it's a little more prone to kind of slipping out of a cut, especially as you're reaching down kind of at the maximum extension of your reach. When the blade tips down a little bit, when you have less belly, it's a little bit less likely to happen. So the Delica's got exactly what I'm looking for, both in the thickness, the grind, and the shape. And the reason I like to recommend it also, the base models start about $80 right now. They're a little more expensive than they used to be, but the VG10 steel that those come with is very easy to maintain, but it still has enough edge retention to get you through your job, your day at work, whatever you happen to be, be doing. This particular version is a little extra special. We've got the K390 blade option because you've got an insane amount of edge retention right here and not that much more expensive than the base model. It's about 115 right now. And I've got some things here with, uh, with less super steels, but cardboard can actually be pretty abrasive and it can really trash an edge uh, after, uh, after a bit of work, especially if you're using something on the, uh, the lower end of the spectrum. So the K390 is gonna be a nice performer here for sure. Now Seth V, our social media manager and I are having a little bit of a disagreement on the subject of hollow grinds. Um, I think if they're on the thinner side, they can work fairly well at cardboard, but you definitely don't wanna to go too thick uh, because you know as you get up towards the top of those shoulders, it might be creating a thicker bit of drag as you go through. He and I both pretty much agree on that, but he likes to think, well, we'll, we'll see how it plays out with, uh, with some testing here, that on the thinner side, at least, as the shoulders push through, you do have less drag between the edge and the top of that shoulder, which can be an advantage. So for the control for this, I do have one hollow grind in here. This is the Badlands Vagabond from Civivi, which you know I'm right in the middle of, uh, of carrying this for a 30-day period anyway. So I figured it'd be a good place to take a look. Now, I will have to worry a little bit about the belly here, probably. Don't want it to slip out of the cut. Uh, but the steel here is pretty decent stuff. It's a 9CR-based stainless steel, or it's a, it's a 9CR series stainless steel, uh, which metallurgically puts it right in the ballpark of 440C. So I mentioned not having a whole lot of belly on the blade uh, for that avoidance of slipping out of a cut. And these next two are going to kind of test that even further. I've got the Hogue Deca with a modified Warncliffe blade. Uh, I was looking for something with maybe a completely straight edge, like a true Warncliffe here. But in the end, I wanted to go with this for a couple reasons. One, we've got another steel to uh, introduce here, 20 CV, another high edge retention steel. And you've also got a very thin cross section of the blade here. So it's gonna have an easier time passing through as opposed to you know a thicker wedge of a blade. Hogue also does a really good job with their factory edges and everything here with the testing is gonna be running on the factory edge, except for that Civivi. I've stropped it and, uh, and touched it up a little bit since I've been carrying it. But really good profile here, even though you do have a little bit of a kick up to the, uh, the tip there, it's still gonna be very easy, or should be very easy, to keep it inside the cut as you go through. Price on these, of course, uh, I didn't mention on the, the uh, Civivi, that comes in about 40 bucks. 
Uh, this right here is the most expensive knife we're going to be uh, testing today, coming in about 140. Now the CJRB Crag has this cleaver blade, which in terms of the edge itself, pretty similar in fact to a lot of worn clips or modified worn clips out there, but you've got a lot more steel behind it, which can be a little bit of a kind of reassurance if you're pushing through a big pile of cardboard, you got a little bit of extra rigidity and strength there behind it. And on this Knife Center exclusive version with the burlap micarta handles, not only does that give you good grip, but also these are contoured, whereas some of the base models of the Crag are all flat. So you got a little more comfort in the hand when you're pushing through a cut, about 45 bucks for this exclusive and less expensive for the non-exclusive versions. So taken to the extreme of a blade shape that's not gonna slip out of a cut is a hawk bill shape, which I've got right here, a case pruner, comes in about $74 right now, and a very aggressive downward sweep to the blade with that sharp tip there. The cool thing about this is it is much, much harder even than a Warncliffe blade to have it slip out of your cut. It's just a shape that really wants to grab and gather all the material into it as it's slicing through. So it's gonna be really fun to test this out. And we've got another steel here. Uh, this is Case's True Sharp Stainless, which is their, uh, their trade name for their 420 series stainless. So not a high degree of edge retention here. Still easy to maintain, however. But it's gonna be real interesting to see how this performs. I haven't, uh, I haven't done a lot with some ag really aggressive hawk bills in a while, so it'll be pretty fun. We'll see how that performs too. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about with these last two knives is handle comfort. And handle comfort can have a lot to do with how effective a tool is when you're doing a task like this. And so we'll see how that pans out, especially with this first knife, which is the Becker BK40 extremely comfortable handle. One of the most comfortable handles on a folding knife, especially in the budget realm. This is a $40 knife. And we'll see how well that does counteracting what I see as potentially some issues with the blade for this specific task when you're talking about a dedicated cardboard knife. A lot of belly here, most belly of, uh, of anything on the table, so have to be careful, a little more control on our cuts. It is a flat grind, but it's a little bit thicker as well. Again, Outright slicing efficiency for cardboard wasn't the main mission for this knife, but I'm interested to see how it performs, again, thanks to that very comfortable handle. And that's something where it could be very different from something like that Delica, which, you know, has a fairly thin handle. But with this, we've got yet another steel, Aus 8 here, which, again, doesn't duplicate anything we've seen so far, so we get a little bit more variety. All right, next up, I've got one more that I wanted to uh, evaluate, especially because of the handle here, and that's the Reich 2 Lie. Started about 140 bucks, and they're about 150 for this Knife Center exclusive version right here. Integral G10 on the handle, so you don't have a uh, quote unquote hot spot there on the back, but it is a little bit of an angular shape. It's not you know a super ergonomic shape like that Becker, but there's something there to be, uh, to be checked out. I wanna see how it's gonna do, and you've also got another blade with very thin stock and a nice high flat grind. So it should be a pretty good slicer. Little bit of belly, not too aggressive, but I think I see some things in the handle shape that are gonna help you know, counteract that just a little bit and 154 cm on this particular blade. So a lot of good stuff here to evaluate. Now, the one thing I don't know that we'll, we'll be able to have the time to, to fully evaluate is the actual edge retention of these steels. Uh, there's only so much time in a day, unfortunately, and all these knives are pretty sharp. Um, but the way things should shake out, you know, all things being optimal, most edge retention you're gonna get out of here on the table, the K390 from Spyderco, followed by the Hogue with the CPM 20CV. After that, it should be the D2 steel on that CJRB followed by the 154 cm on the reich and then bringing up the uh, rest of the last half of the pack you've got the 9 cr on the civivi followed by the aus 8 on the becker and finally last but not least the 420 series from that case so i'm excited to uh to get out to the cardboard and uh, do some cutting it's kind of fun i get paid for this sort of thing i don't hate that so let me throw this stuff in the bag and thomas and i will meet you outside all right, so it was hot outside, so we came back inside to our state-of-the-art testing facility, spared no expense, got my knives here right in front of me, and got a pile of cardboard. So let's just start cutting. I'm gonna start with the Delica. So we got the K390 blade, nice and thin, full flat grind. Modified Warncliffe-esque blade, we'll say, there's a bit of belly, um, but 
let's start with that. And what we're gonna do, after I break it down into some manageable pieces here, we're gonna cut across the grain of the corrugated cardboard just to give these things more of a workout. So it's definitely breezing right through the material, that thin flat grind, man, it just, it, it just breezes. Definitely I'm gonna keep recommending this to folks, um, whether the K390 version or not. I mean, the bones are there, man. It is super, super solid for this kind of job. So the one thing I'll say about the handles on this, thanks to the grip from the bi-directional texturing there, Definitely a solid hold on the knife. Might be a little bit, uh, I don't, don't wanna say painful, but there's the potential for some hot spots there if you're not wearing gloves and you're cutting up a bunch of cardboard like this. But uh, yeah, let's keep going. Cut a few more with this guy before I move on to the next one. What's nice about the blade shape here is in addition to doing just a straight push cut where you're keeping the cardboard just on one piece of the edge, works really well there, but also it's just enough belly there where it's really nice when you're rotating your wrist or your elbow just a little bit. And that gives it a nice little efficient sweep to the slice as you move down, say from heel to tip as you're going through. Very good. All right, I'm not gonna do too much more with the Delica now because I know it works very well. We'll move on to the hollow ground blade with the 9CR steel on the Civivi Badlands Vagabond. I think it's thin enough where the hollow grind isn't gonna be a bother to me, but let's see how it does. So immediately there, right on the first cut, I talked a little bit earlier about the uh, belly on the blade. It can slip out a little bit if you're not careful. First cut already, it did that to me, and that's not something that I had happen with the Delica. So I'm gonna need to uh, change my technique here a little bit to compensate. So it's definitely struggling a little bit more for me than the flat ground bl blade on the Delica. Delica was on its factory edge. This guy right here, I have stropped, so I know it's good and sharp, at least as sharp as, uh, as any factory edge, or at least the way Civivi does not They do a very good job. But yeah, there's something about it I think, I think it's the shoulder. It's pushing it out just a little bit. It still does a fine job, but side by side with the Delica, I think there's a clear winner between these two for this particular task. All right, next we're going to move on to modified Warncliffe shape on the Deca right here. CPM 20 CV steel, very thin, higher flat grinds. I think this one is gonna slice very well also, kind of just like the Delica, I think. We'll see how it does. Factory edge on this too, I should mention. Very good, the factory edge is very nice. Hogue is one of the best out there. And I'm very easily pulling off very thin strips of cardboard, with which if the edge is not there and if the blade itself is too thick, you're gonna have crumpling problems all over the place, but this is doing a great, great job already. All right, grabbed a thicker piece of cardboard here. We'll see how this does. Thicker than we've done uh, for anything else yet, but this blade is nice and thin. I think it's gonna handle it just fine. Nice push cut, very nice. Yeah, definitely takes a bit more effort with the thicker cardboard, even with an ideal blade. say one of the nice things about this blade with the tip there, very nice if you're cutting like on a surface, works very well with that particular kind of shape. Bye. 
starting to struggle a little bit. I'm not quite sure why. Maybe it's the cardboard. Let me go back to the Delica for a second for comparison's sake. The cardboard is a little bit thicker than what I was cutting with the Delica earlier, but the Delica is still doing an easier job of this than the Deca in this case. And it's not down to the sharpness. If anything, the uh, sharpened edge on the Deca out right from the factory is a little bit keener. Not that the spider goes dull, as you can clearly see. Delica's still winning for me at least. But let's let's do a little more with that Deca. Now it seems easier again. I'm not sure why. All right, so far with three down, I think pure efficiency so far is going to the Delica. The Hogue is not that far behind, pretty close. The uh, Badlands Vagabond struggles a bit more in these types of cuts, but it is the most comfortable knife so far of these three, which is an important thing. Definitely feels very good. All right, let's move on now to the CJRB Crag with its cleaver shape and D2 steel. The cleaver, of course, is going to give you very similar uh, advantages as the, the uh, Warncliffe styles of blades out there with its tip work when you're going down, cutting on the surface. I can tell you already, the crag is very nice for this job. Feels extremely, extremely efficient. Of course, I got a bit of crumpled cardboard there as I'm talking, but yeah, it works very well. It's a little bit thicker than, for instance, the Delica we've been using, but it's not super thick. And you've got a really high grind as well to back it up. And one of the things that's nice about it too is that D2 steel. D2 has a reputation for being able to hold a very nice toothy edge, which that little bit of toothiness is actually a really good thing when you're working on cardboard. And on the budget side of things, it's gonna be a great choice for steel if you're looking for something dedicated like this. And I also like the stonewashed finish on this guy. As we scratch, scratch this blade up as we're working, they're gonna hide a little bit better on that finish than some of the other things we're looking at. Now for the thicker stuff with the crag. Man, you can definitely tell the difference between this cardboard and the rest of the stuff. Now, one of the things I appreciate about a blade shape like this is kind of on a little bit of a downward angle like so on the cut. And the handles work really well for that. Thanks again a little bit to that contouring and more over just the shape. But when you're pushing down like that with a blade shape like this with no real belly or no real up sweep, very unlikely to slip out of a cut. It's just gonna work very well. Yeah, this knife definitely does the job. The D2 there is doing a great job as well. Again, I think that the little bit of toothy character to this steel, again, thanks to the very large carbides is gonna be a benefit here. One thing to watch out for, I didn't really run into it too much here, is knives with a sharpening choil like this. One thing that can happen is, you know, we were talking about the blade or the cardboard slipping off the front of a belly on a blade. It could also slip off the back and then just get caught up in this area where, you know, you're not pushing through with an edge, you're just pushing through with the thickness of the steel. And, you know, I hate to say it, I hate to keep bringing it back to uh, my favorite suggestion in this category, the Delica. It's one thing you don't run into here because you don't have a sharpening choil. It goes right back to the plunge line with a little bit of a drop below the edge. So if you do kind of walk back towards the back end of the blade, you're less, much less likely to slip out and you'll be able to stay on the edge there. But anyway, let's look at the next knife. And I'm pretty excited by it actually. I've been doing a little bit of cutting uh, with these last ones already, but this is one of the ones I'm really excited to be trying out, this, this hawk bill shape. I think there's a lot to, uh, to recommend here. So let's start with uh, just some regular cardboard first. So one of the nice things 
uh, about this style of blade on a slip joint is when you're going to pierce with it, very unlikely for it to actually come loose or, uh, or close on your fingers because you're pushing back up into the spine or into the backspacer there. So that works very well for that sort of thing. All right, so we've got a flat grind on this knife and again, no, just a little bit of a sharpening choil here right at the edge. So, but not as aggressive as some of these other guys. So we'll see if that has an impact at all if we even run into it. So right there at the back, it's a little bit thicker. You can see there at the spine versus out there near the tip. So the most efficient way to cut with this actually is using the tip because there's less to kind of get in the way. And you can see that hawk bill shape, we're still almost pointed down on all of this. So the likelihood of slipping out the front is pretty low. Actually, this reverse grip is working very nicely. And that's down to the handle shape here. You've got this sway back style and it more naturally falls into that reverse grip, which for a pruning knife makes a lot of sense because if you're gonna be coming in, you know, in a reverse grip most of the time anyway. One of the fun things about zipping through a lot of cardboard is the friction. Your blade actually starts to warm up a little bit, makes you feel kind of kind of awesome, like you're actually doing something. Um, one thing I'll say, or the last thing I'll say here, the blade shape is great. I think it works very well. The handles give me a little bit of pause. I mean, they're a little bit on the thinner side, and this particular version, which is the, uh, the American Worker version, is has a slick synthetic scale on it. Uh, I think what I would do if I were kind of, if I were wanting to dedicate one of these knives to cardboard duty is I'd go for one of the jigged bone versions that Case offers, just so you have a little bit more grip. And in most cases, even just a little bit more thickness, depending on you know how they actually treat the, the bone on the particular one you get. Good proof of concept. This wouldn't be the one I would pick personally, but it is gonna work pretty well. All right, now in some pretty stark contrast, handle wise, we're gonna go from the, uh, the case slip joint to that Becker BK40. Very, very different knives, very, very different handles. So let's check it out. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, blade steel's a little bit thicker here. We've got OS 8 and you have a lot of belly here. So it's, it requires maybe a little bit more uh, care and a little bit more attention paid to how you're cutting through something. But let's see how it does. All right, immediately with the first cut, I can tell you a few things. Even though you've got a thicker blade, technically less efficient geometry, the handle made a huge difference in this case. I didn't feel like I was struggling with the knife. I didn't feel like it was about to, uh, to slip or I had to be super careful with it. It's just there to back me up. The other thing I noticed is it did slip back a little bit and I rode on the, uh, the thumb studs for just a moment on that first cut. Um, but actually, now that I think about it, depending on your angle, that could be a bit of a safety measure to keep it from sliding back into that sharpening choil. Let's, uh, let's cut a little more, let's cut a little more. It's actually moving through very efficiently, but I did just do right there, that thing that's so easy to do with a big belly like this. Slipped out of the cut a little bit. Granted, we can just come back in and finish it, but that's always something you have to, uh, to think about with this type of shape. Okay, so I just found something on that last cut that impacted a little bit. I've got some slices going this way and I'm realizing that's from when I was cutting on top of the pile earlier. It interrupted my slice and screwed me up a little bit on that last cut. Oh well, live and learn. All right, it's doing pretty well on the thin cardboard. Um, the thickness of the blade isn't really working against me too much. But that's not the, uh, the most robust cardboard. Let's take a look at some of the thick stuff again. And let's see what it can do for us here. Yep, definitely a bit more of a struggle moving through. And I can see one of the things I did there that's actually helping me 
is if, if you're pointing down like this, kind of similar to that crag that I was talking about earlier, you're essentially using the point of the tip here where the geometry or the blade itself feels a little bit thinner. You're not fighting you know, the full thickness right away. So by starting the cut back there and then moving back into the thicker portion, you've already started the job. So it's not as big of a deal, but it is definitely more of a task here, I'm not following my own advice. It's more of a task than something like that Andela, or sorry, that Delica, but it's a lot more comfortable than that Delica. That's for sure. So win some, you lose some with this particular design, at least on the, uh, the thick stuff for sure. Yeah, I don't really like kind of the amount of force it's taking to push through on the diagonal here. It, it feels a little bit almost borderline unsafe in a way because of the amount of, uh, of force that's required to do that. I want to be a little careful. I don't want to go kind of hog wild and, and mess anything up here. The handle is really nice though. I think what I would do if, if I wanted to dedicate this, this particular knife to a cardboard knife, I'd do what any good Becker head out there does and get to modifying it. If you could take this down to a full flat grind, maybe thin out the edge a little bit that would help. And maybe even coming in, you know, a little bit more than you're supposed to, like grinding through the top of the blade. So you thin everything out a little more, just a hint, maybe. I, could, I think that could work pretty well. And maybe even drop the tip so it's less of a, uh, less of a uh, amount of belly here out at the front, but I probably wouldn't mess with that too much. But very nice. I mean, this, this just goes to show you how, or it goes to show me anyway, and I hope it comes across how important the handle is to the usability of a knife on a thing like this. All right, now we're gonna move on to the Reich 2 lie with its 154 cm blade and that integral G10 handle. Not as comfortable in your kind of gorilla grip as that, uh, that Becker is, but very interesting shape to check out. So let's, uh, let's see what it does. Let's start with the regular cardboard first, not the, uh, not the thick stuff. Thin blade is already working very nicely. I mean, there's so much to be said for a cardboard knife to be on the thinner side. Nice and slim, pretty high flat grind, slices well. Now, one of the things about the reverse cuts like this with a drop point with belly is as you get closer to the top, you have to change your angle and actually angle the blade up a little bit or else you're gonna slip out like we've been talking about. One thing I've noticed here is kind of the, the Gorilla Grip section, like I said, is not as comfortable as the K-Bar. It's also not the best place for this handle. It's not the way it feels like it wants to be held. If you choke back a little bit and do a little bit of a pinch grip, thumb on the side there, angles the blade down a little bit. And that's a help with a blade shape with this amount of belly because you're, you're minimizing the effect of that, of that a little bit since you are pointed down already. A little bit less likely for that slippage. All right, let's try the thicker stuff. This cardboard really is uh, a, a formidable opponent, no matter what the blade is. You can see there on my last cut, I started, things started to kind of go rogue on me and I just had to follow the path that the blade wanted to take. But the best shot you've got with the thicker stuff is the thinner blade, kind of the thicker the cardboard, the thinner the blade you want. Most of these knives have something really good, uh, good about them. But while the cameras weren't rolling, we actually tried something else. Uh, Seth V over there handed me the K-Bar Dozier Hunter in D2 that he's been carrying, another hollow ground knife. The hollow grind on my Civivi there didn't do super hot, but the K-Bar did a pretty good job here. And let's move back to some thinner cardboard. And I think I know why this is the case, but let me, uh, let me do a few cuts with this first just to demonstrate. It's working pretty smoothly. 
compare that to the Civivi, still working, it's a little bit of a struggle. Yeah, the, the Dozier is just a little bit smoother here. And they're both sharp knives, but I think we're getting down to, you know, this is one of those things where literally the steel can make a difference, not just in the edge retention, but how it performs at certain tasks. D2 has, you know, bigger carbide, carbides, and it's harder for it to take a more refined finish. It takes a toothier finish much better. The 9CR here is, you know, equivalent of something like 440C, which really gained prominence in the, in the industry because of how well it polished. The custom makers at the times loved the mirror finish you could get from a 440C blade. And the edge on this Civivi is a bit more polished. And what I think is happening is that's actually working to our detriment on this particular case. Just feels a little slippier, whereas, you know, you're talking microscopically here, but it can make a difference. Whereas those bigger carbides and the slightly quote unquote toothier edge of the D2 is making a difference. So let's sub this in, do a few cuts with the old, uh, the old K bar here and see how it does as well. It's working very well, very well, very different from the Civivi in this case, which is still working, but not quite with the same amount of ease. Could be Seth is just a better sharpener than I am too. That's also a possibility. But they're both quite sharp and I don't think that goes all the way to explaining the difference here. I really do think it comes down to the steels. So I think that difference between, you know, a more highly refined edge versus a toothy edge came into play a little bit in this Hogue versus the Spyderco as well. The, uh, the Spyderco is slightly thinner and it does have a higher grind, yes, but the initial bite was a little bit harder on the Hogue because they actually have what I consider one of the best factory edges out there in that it is very highly refined and pretty highly polished, not uh, something you see very often in a factory setting. And you don't see it on the Spyderco. The Spyderco is very sharp and is still very sharp after all this cutting thanks to that K390, but K390 does have some slightly bigger carbides than some steels out there. Not as big as D2, certainly, but it also is a little bit toothier of a finishing job, or at least a less polished finishing job on the edge of the Spyderco. And you can definitely feel that difference here as well. So I guess the real question for us is, what are the takeaways? If you're looking for a cardboard knife, what should you get? A lot of good information here, I think, and I, I even learned some things or remembered some things I haven't thought about in a while. And for me, the Delica still does come across as a very good recommendation, especially with something like the K390. It's really nice. So if you're looking for a high, high edge retention steel that you're gonna be able to cut cardboard with for a long time, definitely a good choice. The blade shape works very well for this task. The grind and the thinness works very well. And even the little details like the lack of a choil here at the back is going to be advantageous for a task like this. I'd say if you don't want to spend that much money and you're looking to, you know, look more on the budget side, D2, I think is a great place to take a look. It's got the right kind of molecular structure to work well at this sort of thing. It does have a good long lasting edge and there are a ton of options out there at very low prices. I mean, this K bar here, 32 bucks, this particular crag, 45 bucks, but there are crags less expensive than that. A lot of good options. All of these wouldn't be, none of these would be a bad option, I should say. But I don't know, for me, those seem to be the takeaways, at least that I have after cutting up this, uh, this pile of ribbons right here. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Let me know your favorite cardboard cutters as well. And if you want to get your hands on any of these guys, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to knifecenter.com. Make sure you sign up for our Knife Rewards program so that if you put your money down on one of these cardboard slayers, you'll earn some free money to spend on your next purchase. I'm David C. Anderson coming at you from the Knife Center's top secret, spared no expense, state-of-the-art testing zone. See you next time. When all else fails, carcass splitter. <laughs>